Hey, it's Brian. I was up playing around with my uh, 80s toys. I kind of restore old stuff, you know, like especially cars. Um, but I bet not too many y'all know that I have these other hobbies, uh, including restoring old arcade machines, electronics. Uh, I've got some stereos uh, from my childhood that I've restored. But yeah, um, here's a 78 era Space Invaders and pretty advanced for the for the quarter you got in its time you got um a monochromatic screen that had green vinyl um down there and it's just reflecting up on a mirror in reverse with a kind of a diorama kind of background that's backlit by a by a fluorescent light um pretty advanced for 1978 so that's a fully original machine and then I've got an old arcade machine with a modern computer. It, it does like 4,000 different games on it. And then my childhood favorite was Spy Hunter. Uh, really advanced game. I always loved cars and racing and James Bond type stuff. So this is what got me into rebuilding these these arcade machines is I really wanted a Spy Hunter. Um, but that's not all. So I've also got some stereos. I was collecting some of my childhood stereos. I wanted my three girls to each have the same box I had from the 80s. And so here's my stereos from the 80s. I bought them in eighth grade, something like 84, 85, with uh, Lone Mower Money. And this is pretty much top of the line stuff, so I made pretty good money mowing yards. Um, these are detachable speakers, so you can separate them on your bookshelf, left and right. Um, built an equalizer, AM, FM. You could separate the sound left and right and balance out your room. You had an extra phono in if you had vinyl still or whatnot. They hadn't invented Bluetooth or nothing like that, so the aux, aux in was called phono. Um, stereo, metal. I never liked metal tapes, never made it sound better to me. Um, you can, while you're recording, you can hit mute and then your Dolby on and off. It takes out some of the hiss from the, from the tape. It also takes out the high end, so I often left Dolby off. And then if you're, say you borrowed a buddy's tape, uh, they could afford the, the real thing and then you were cheaping it out and had, had a, copies you know a machine like this could dub it over and then this one even had high speed so you click high speed and um you could record watch i'll show you how that works actually so i don't like that song right so you hit play and fast forward at the same time skips ahead hit pause <laughs> see that's high speed so you turn that off, go away, tape's done, all half the time. And then, that's right, we just want to listen to it while it's recording. And then... See, now it's on the stick. A little warbly. But still... And then you use the counter to mark down when your songs start. Um, not everybody's cassette players had the auto search function. So, you know, again, you can hit rewind or fast forward with play and it will seek out the blank spot on the tape and then it will stop and start playing for you. Um, some cassette players had auto reverse. This, this is like the only feature this one doesn't have. Let's see, it found a blank spot, so. Should be a song. There it comes. All right, and then get the most out of your Medicare. Go back to the radio. For and during retirement. Um, How to avoid the single biggest threat to retirement? Believe it or not. And then you can also record off the DJ. Most importantly, how to guarantee you'll achieve the retirement. Of And whatever you hit, pause and record on, it starts playing. Uh, 
All right, that's about it. So I have three of them that I've restored and gotten, I had to buy several off eBay, um, swapped out a lot of parts. Each of these had something different, like equalizers broken or speakers were bad or tape player didn't work. But I've got one for each of my daughters and then started off with just doing one for myself for fun. Um, but the more I got into it, the more I figured out how to fix them and I figured I would go ahead and do three in a row. So that's what I've done.